Okay, uh, in the previous uh, lectures, we have discussed some of the general applications of operational amplifier such as adder, subtractor, logarithmic amplifier, anti logarithmic amplifier, instrumentation amplifier, and so on. So, in this lecture, now we will discuss some of the specialized applications such as filters. So, in this uh, lecture, we will discuss about the active filters. So, I will come to what is uh, meant by active filter. So, before that, I will discuss what is a filter. Filter is a electronic circuit which allows a band of frequencies and rejects the remaining frequencies. It is basically a frequency selective network. filter is a frequency selective circuit that allows a band of frequencies and attenuates or rejects. Frequencies outside the band. So, this uh, filter is one of the important block in uh, many of the communication and instrumentation systems. This is an important block. because in communication, so we want to recover the original uh, desired signal from the uh, noise corrupted signal. So, in order to remove the noise, we can use the filters. Similarly, in the instrumentation, if we record uh, some data from the sensor, so that data consists of uh, the desired signal as well as uh, some undesired uh, noises. So, in order to remove those noises, we can use uh, these filters. So, filters basically we can uh, classify the filters in uh, three ways. Analog and digital filters. depends upon the, the type of signal that we are going to process. It is called as either analog filter or digital filter. Analog filter as the name implies process the analog signals digital filter process digital signals or discrete time signals. So, in this course, we will uh, mostly discuss about the analog filter design and the second classification is based on the frequency range that a filter can process. It can be called as audio frequency filters. or radio frequency called RF, AF or RF. So, what is the range of the audio frequencies? We know that this is normally in the range of 20 to 20 kilohertz and radio frequencies will be normally 
from 20 kilohertz to 300 gigahertz high frequencies so this in order to process this audio frequencies we can use the components like a resistor and capacitor whereas in order to process this radio frequencies we require inductor also the third classification is based on the active and passive filters so in case of passive filter it uses only the components like r l and c resistance inductance and capacitance passive components whereas in active filters in addition to r l c it also uses transistors or operation amplifiers so in active filter in addition to uh, r l c it also uses transistors or operational amplifiers so in this course we'll discuss about the active filters which uses operational amplifier and then basically r and c because inductor it becomes difficult to fabricate in the ic form and as you have discussed in the earlier lectures that a inductor can be simulated by using a rc network connecting a risk capacitors in the feedback uh, path and there are many advantages of this active filters uh, compared with the passive filters that i will discuss later in this uh, lecture so this is one of the classifications of uh, this filters and depends upon the frequency range that it will select as i have told this is frequency select to network so we can depends upon the frequency range that it is going to be select we have again four types of the filters one is called low pass filter as the name implies it passes the low frequencies reject the high frequencies if i take the ideal response of the low pass filter the frequency response is something like this up to f is equal to fc this is the frequency f and this is the h of f magnitude this is unity this is zero and of course this is symmetric with respect to the origin i am not showing the other part it allows the frequencies from zero to fc with unity gain from fc to infinity the gain is zero so all frequencies above this fc will be rejected so this is the ideal low pass filter first i'll discuss what is this uh, transfer function this is called transfer function if i take a system say this is lti system the linear time invariant system and is continuous time so this filter will acts as a continuous time lti system with input x of t output y of t if i take the laplace transform of input and output and if i call this laplace transform as x of s and y of s respectively then the ratio of this output uh, laplace transform to the input laplace transform ratio of output laplace transform to input laplace uh, transform is called as transfer function h of s y of s by x of s and if you want to obtain the frequency response s we have to substitute as j omega r j 2 pi f so h of j to the power of h of j omega is equal to y of j omega 
डिवाइड बाई एक्स ऑफ जे ओमेगा दिस इज कॉल्ड द फ्रीक्वेंसी रेस्पॉन्स ऑफ द सिस्टम सो वी कैन ऑल्टरनेटिवली राइट दिस एज एफ आर ओमेगा रिलेशन इज ओमेगा इज इक्वल टू पाई एफ वी आर फेमिलियर विथ दिस एफ विच इज एक्सप्रेस इन हेड्स एंड इफ इट इज ओमेगा इट विल बी रेडियंस पर सेकेंड एफ विल बी इन हेड्स सो दैट टू पाई स्केलिंग फैक्टर विल बी देर हियर दिस कैन बी एच ऑफ ओमेगा और एच ऑफ एफ सो इट अलाउज द फ्रीक्वेंसीज फ्रॉम जीरो टू एफ सी and reject the frequency from fc to infinity this is called ideal low pass filter this is the response of ideal one and uh, practically it will be different from the ideal one so if you want practical low pass filter it will be something like this this is ideal one and this is practical and the second type of filter is called high pass filter as the name implies it passes the high frequencies rejects the low frequencies the ideal and practical response of this high pass filter is like this it rejects the frequencies from 0 to fc this is 0 to fc and from fc to infinity it passes with unity gain this is the ideal response and if you want practical response it will be something like this this is the practical response and the third type of filter is called band pass filter it allows a band of frequencies now this will be having two uh, cut off frequencies one is called lower cut off frequency another is called upper cut off frequency this will be zero from here to here it this will allow zero fcl lower cut off frequency fch higher cut off frequency So we'll allow with unity gain. From zero to F C H, this will reject. From F C H to infinity also rejects. Only this range of frequencies will be allowed. This is called band pass filter. And if I take the practical band pass filter, this will be something like this. This is practical band pass filter. And the last one is band reject filter. Just opposite to band pass filter is band reject filter. Are also called as band stop filter. it rejects only a band of frequencies and the remaining all frequencies will be passed this is fcl fch it rejects only fcl to fch 0 to fcl unity gain fch to infinity unity gain This is the ideal frequency response of band reject or band stop filter. And if you want practical one, it will be something like this. 
this is the practical band stop filter. Now, in this course, we will discuss the design of these filters. Okay. So, let us first start with the low pass filter. Okay. So, in order to demonstrate the advantages of uh, this active filters over passive filters, I will first consider the passive low pass filter and after that I will consider the active low pass filter, then I will uh, compare these two and I will uh, discuss the advantages of passive uh, filters over active filters. If I take a low pass filter passive means it uh, has to allow the low frequencies up to uh, some frequency called cutoff frequency after that it has to reject the remaining frequencies. So, simply a resistor and capacitor will form a low pass filter. This is passive because this does not contain the transistor or operational amplifier. This is V i of t, this is V o of t, this is r, this is c, this is the input output. So, if you want in S domain, so this circuit in S domain will be instead of T will be having S and capacitance becomes 1 by SC. V i of S, V o of S, the ratio of this output Laplace transform to input Laplace transform is called as transfer function and if you replace S with J omega, you will get frequency response. Basically, here we are interested in frequency response of the filters. So, from this what is V 0 of S? this is voltage division, this V a of S is going to distribute between R and 1 by SC. I want the voltage across 1 by SC, so this is equal to V a of S into 1 by SC divided by R plus 1 by SC. So, this is equal to SC, SC will get cancelled, you will get 1 over 1 plus S R C into V i of S. In place what is transfer function? H of S is equal to V o of S divided by V i of S this is equal to 1 over 1 plus S R C. This is the transfer function of this circuit and what is the frequency response? Replace S with J omega. If I define omega c is equal to 1 by r c implies what is r c is equal to 1 by omega c. So, what happens to this h of j omega 1 over 1 plus j omega this r c becomes 1 over omega c. So, omega by omega c. So, this is the transfer function of the given circuit. Now, this will be having uh, two parts, one is magnitude part and uh, phase part. Magnitude is nothing but 1 by square root of 1 plus omega square by omega c square. Because you know that for a complex number, the magnitude is square root of real part plus imaginary part square and phase angle is let us call phi of omega is phase angle of h of j omega. This is equal to minus tan inverse omega by omega c because this is in the denominator if I take to the numerator it will be minus sign and tan inverse of phase angle of a plus j b is equal to tan inverse b by a. because of this uh, denominator term we have to keep minus sign. So, we basically interested in the magnitude response. Here I will plot as a function of omega, you can plot as a function of f also, the relation is only 
omega is equal to 2 pi f. So, what is magnitude of h of j omega? One over one plus omega by omega c whole square under square. So we can see the properties here. At omega is equal to zero, low frequencies basically. So what happens to magnitude of h of j omega? This is zero. So one by one, it's unity. at omega is equal to omega c. What is this? Modulus of h of j omega is equal to this is omega omega c becomes 1. So, 1 by root 2. This is 0 0.707. This is less than this. This is less than the value at omega. Means as the frequency increases, the gain is going to be decreasing. At omega is equal to 0 unity gain, at another frequency at omega c the gain is 0 0.707 which is less than 1. And if I think take the extreme end, this is the beginning and this is the end, omega is equal to infinity. What is h of j omega? This is infinity 1 plus infinity also infinity 1 over infinity is 0. This is minimum value at maximum frequency and maximum value at minimum frequency. So, if I plot for different values of the omega, you can find out that this response will be something like this. At infinite, it will go to 0. This is I am plotting with respect to omega. You can plot with respect to f also because the only difference is 2 pi. This is magnitude of frequency response with omega. At omega equal to 0, what is the value here? This is 1, this is maximum value. At omega equal to infinity will go to 0 and at a value which is called as omega is equal to omega c, this is 1 by root 2. So, the frequency at which the magnitude is 1 by root 2 times the maximum value is called as cutoff frequency. You can say that uh, 1 by root 2 attenuation is allowed. So, omega c is uh, called cutoff frequency means this allows from 0 to omega c and omega c to uh, infinity it attenuates this is the attenuation. So, normally this frequency response will be plotted in dB scale because it covers lot of uh, a wide range of the frequencies. So, normally this will be uh, plotted in dB scale. If I plot in the dB scale, this is logarithm of omega, this is 20 logarithm of modulus of h of j omega. So, what happens to this plot? Plot remains same. This value becomes 0 dB because 20 logarithm of 1 logarithm of 1 is 0. So, this is 0 dB. What is 20 logarithm of 1 by root 2? You can see that this is minus 3 dB, 3.01 something. So, this is called minus 3 dB. So, normally the cutoff frequency will be defined at minus 3 dB. The frequency at minus 3 dB is called cutoff frequency. So, this will act as a low pass filter as you have discussed uh, in the previous slides that this is the ideal response, this is the practical response. We are getting this practical response using a simple RC circuit. So, we can implement this uh, low pass filter using RC components which is passive elements. Then why you have to go for the active filter? In active filter what happens is we have to add an operational amplifier. So, if I take the active low pass filter, this 
the network that we have considered is the resistance and then capacitance. So, the same circuit will be here also, but in addition to this we have to use operation amplifier. see the output V0 of t, this is the input Vi of t. Instead of taking the output from here, we are taking output after the operational amplifier. This is R1, Rf, this is simply R and C. So, if I take this Vi in terms of Laplace transform, then this C will be taken in terms of 1 by Sc. If I call this point as point A. So, what is the expression for V A by V I either it can be T or S function of S A is the one that we have derived. This is 1 over 1 by omega C, where omega C is what? This is cut off frequency 1 by R C. or cutoff frequency in terms of Fc is equal to 1 by 2 pi Rc, this is called cutoff frequency. This R and C is going to decide the cutoff frequency of the filter. Now, for this entire circuit, what is the transfer function H of S? The final output V0 of S divided by Vi of S. If I forget about uh, this circuit, if I know that this voltage is V A, V A of T or V A of S, this voltage here is V A of S. What is this remaining circuit? This is non-inverting amplifier whose gain is equal to 1 plus R F by R 1. So, what is the expression for V 0 of S in terms of V A of S? V A of S into 1 plus R F by R 1, because this is non-inverting amplifier. Let this 1 plus R F by R 1 is A naught. Therefore, what is V naught of S? V A of S into A naught. So, we want finally V0 by Vi. Okay. This is equal to from this what is Va of S? Va of S is Vi of S into 1 over 1 plus j omega by omega c from this. If I take this Vi of S to the other side, Vi of S is equal to Vi of S divided by 1 plus this one into this A 0 or what is H of S transfer function V 0 of S by V i of S this is equal to A 0 by 1 plus j omega by omega c. This is exactly same as this transfer function without op amp except for that only A 0 is coming here. Here A0 is not there, unity is there, here A0 is there and the denominator is exactly same. This is the transfer function using op amp, this is the transfer function without op amp. This is transfer function without op amp, which you can call as passive low pass filter transfer function and this is with op amp. This you can call as the transfer function with operational amplifier. Okay. So, if I plot the response only this magnitude becomes A 0 here. 
So, what will be the frequency response with and without uh, this one? This is 20 logarithm of this is logarithm of omega modulus of h of j omega will be same response you will get, but now here this will be instead of 0 dB this will be 20 logarithm of a 0 and this will be minus 3 dB less than this. 20 logarithm of a 0 minus 3 dB. Initially this was 0 dB and this is minus 3 dB. So, the response is almost same. Then what are the advantages of this passive and active low pass filter? This is passive low pass filter. with input V i of t, V 0 of t, this is passive and the active is the same circuit with op amp. This is of course with respect to ground only. this R and this R, this C and this C same. So, the response is almost same except for that there will be some gain here. So, this was initially 0 dB, now this will be 20 logarithm of A 0. So, this advantages of the passive filters are In addition to filtering, active filter provides gain in the desired band. So, this desired band of the frequencies 0 to Fc is called as pause band. The frequencies from here to here, these are stop band, here to infinity stop band. Of course, you can divide this also into again two uh, values, one is up to some particular frequency, we will call this one as transition band and this one as stop band. From here to here stop band and from here to here this is called as transition band. So, in the pause band this is allowing some gain without uh, operational amplifier passive this will be having something like here, this is the gain, this much is the gain. Now, with the active we are getting some gain, that gain factor is you can see that this 1 plus R f by R 1, this was the gain provided in the pass band, whereas here this will not provide the gain, this is one advantage of passive filter. Both will perform the filtering of the high pass uh, signals low pass signals will be passed, but here low pass signals will be passed with gain, here without gain. This is one of the advantage. Second advantage is active filters will be having uh, no loading effect. Here this you have to give from the source, this you have to give to the destination or load. So, here because of 
this uh, high input resistance this will load the source and this will load the load whereas here this operational amplifier by its uh, construction this will be having high input impedance ideally this is infinity output impedance is ideally 0 because of this values. So, this will not uh, load this will not uh, load this load device and it will not load the source also from where you are taking V A of T. This V A of T will be normally taken from some sensor or some uh, circuit ok and this will be delivered to some load. So, this is output uh, resistance because of this output resistance is low this will not affect this load and this input resistance is large it will not load this source. This is no loading effect in case of active filter sorry this is active filter. And the third one is low cost because the operational amplifier does not uh, contains any inductors and all here inductor can be uh, simulated by using R and C elements. So, the cost of this uh, active filter is less than that of passive filter. So, because of these three reasons this active filters are more popular nowadays in almost all the electronic uh, appliances this active filters are present. Now, this is actually called as first order filter. because we have only one R 1 C. So, this number of R and C is going to decide the order of the filter. Okay. The drawback of this one is ideally we want this type of the response this is the response that we are interested ideal low pass filter. So, in order to get the ideal low pass filter this slope in the transition band has to be more for the first order filter if you see this one minus 20 dB per decade. For 10 fold increment in this frequency 10 fold increment and if you see this corresponding uh, gain it will be reduces by 20 dB. So, this is called minus 20 dB per decade slope. So, if this slope is more then this characteristics approaches the ideal characteristics. So, in order to increase this slope in the transition band you have to go for the higher orders. So, the next one is second order filter. So, this uh, second order filter we will discuss in the next lecture. Thank you.